of it. Uh, certainly without the Indian Army contribution, and of course Sikhs were a large part of that contribution, I think the war might have been very, very different. Uh, the Indian Army contingents arrived uh, during the first Battle of Ypres uh, just in time and in just enough numbers uh, to block the gaps. They certainly saved the British from what might have been an embarrassing retreat back to the Channel ports. The Sikh and Hindu soldiers who died at the Royal Pavilion were cremated at this spot, just outside Brighton, now known as the Shatri Memorial. They were all part of a death toll, which by the end of the conflict numbered over nine million lives. Certainly in the award of gallantry medals, the Sikhs were certainly overrepresented, not only in Victoria Crosses, but in other gallantry medals as well. But any Sikh soldiers who'd hoped that their loyalty during the war would be rewarded with greater autonomy back in their homeland were in for a shock. Within months of the war's end, Britain reverted Punjab back to martial law under a repressive regime which reached its nadir in April 1919 in the Sikhs' holiest city. British military orders led to the shooting of 1,500 unarmed men, women and children at Jallianwala Bagh for taking part in a peaceful demonstration against British rule in what became known as the Amritsar Massacre. They'd fought as a voluntary force for, uh, an, for, for another country, for a, for a campaign which didn't affect them, and uh, this is how they were treated, so they, they, there, was, there was betrayal and they felt cheated. By the start of the Second World War, Anglo-Indian relations were increasingly fraught due to the rapidly growing independence movement, leaving many Indians facing a dilemma of loyalty. Nevertheless, India's Sikhs, Hindus and Muslims again answered the British distress call with over two and a half million signing up for action, the largest